Welcome, Mr. Ross. Welcome, Mr. Marriott. Glad to see you. Mr. Raines, glad to see you, sir. Jan, glad you could join us. I've got a dog that's decided to come peek around the corner at me. Yeah, go ahead and I, I can make her a cake. I'll just leave it on. Hey, would you do me a favor? Yeah. Coffee? Would you please? Yeah. I just started the show. Evening, 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 family. Welcome, uh, welcome. I hope everyone is uh, making it through the evening. Uh, if you've been outside, you know that there is quite a bite in the air. Bryson, good to see you, sir. Like I say, there's quite a bite in the air. Uh, I was outside just a little bit ago myself, and uh, I'm like, well, I don't know that I have enough clothes on, and I'm dressed pretty uh, warm. Uh, this is my inside clothes, though. It didn't include what I put on before I went outside. And it, uh, I think the wind is uh, quite biting tonight. So, Debbie, good to see us. Hope your packing is going well. But one of the things that uh, I know I'm having and several other people that I've talked to are having is we're having issues with pain right now. Uh, those of us suffering from uh, chronic pain, uh, chronic conditions uh, causing pain, failed surgeries, back injuries, bone injuries, joint injuries, a lot of pain going on right now. We'll talk a little bit about that. I'm glad I'm here, Stephen. I, I truly am. I was actually pretty close on time. Jan, I will tell her that she, you said hi. But, yeah, I had one sticking his head around the corner of the, of the desk watching me uh, since I was in the office and he wasn't. Hey, Robin. Good to see you, sir. Yeah, you're good, buddy, Spud. So... But yeah, uh, chronic pain is uh, bothering lots of people right now, uh, along with it, all the uh, associated conditions. Uh, people having fibro flares with the weather, uh, all kinds of things, MS uh, acting up with the weather, quite a bit of pain-related stuff. And we'll talk a little bit about pain control and, and methods we could use for pain control. Yeah, the, the, the pain has been really bad, Debbie. The, the weather has uh, contributed con tremendously to uh, what's going on. Uh, this north wind, uh, my house is uh, well insulated, uh, fairly well built. There's some issues with it, but as with any house, there are going to be some issues. But uh, doors and windows uh, whistle. Uh, when they got a 50-mile-an-hour wind coming out of the north, they whistle. Uh, when I landscape my place, I actually put up uh, windbreaks. Uh, I have cedar trees up and around for windbreaks to keep them off the house. And it does a pretty good job, but still, my windows whistle, my door whistles. Uh, so, you know, it, the house stays cold. The heater stays going because the house is always cold, and the house is always cold because the wind's blowing 50 miles an hour. That and the uh, you know, wind chill's down, what, 15 degrees right now, something like that? Wind chill is down to 15 degrees. We're like at 25 degrees, 26 degrees here at the house. Uh, so quite uh, a little chilly, quite a little bit chilly right now. But all of those things, uh, the pressure changes, the uh, uh, atmospheric changes. Thank you, Sean. Atmospheric changes, the uh, high pressure, low pressure, the cold, the cold front coming down, uh, add the cold weather in on top of all that other, and it causes quite a bit of issues. And as I say, this is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, cannabis strategies tonight. So 
we're going to talk about cannabis strategies for working with those uh, conditions. Uh, Debbie's already jumped out there. RSO. Heat. Heat is my friend as well as RSO. And, and true, if you're suffering from a chronic pain condition, uh, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, uh, damage to the joint, uh, torn cartilage, ligaments, anything along that line, there tends to be swelling along with it. And if you're having swelling anyway, you add changes in weather such as this, changes in heat and cold, and, and certainly those things cause an increase in the swelling uh, and a decrease in circulation because your joints get cold. They actually are affected by the cold themselves and, and they shut down blood flow. Uh, and that, of course, is never a good thing. We, we need that blood flow to those areas that are implement, inflamed to, to pull those byproducts off, to, to, to cut down on that inflammation. But it can't do it without good blood flow. So getting them cold doesn't do uh, much to help. You know, here I am. I've got a big, heavy Carhartt hoodie on. And I've got a, a button-up, long-sleeved uh, waffle shirt on. Uh, and, and I'm still a little chilly. My, my overalls sitting here. And uh, when I go to go outside, you know, 22 degrees feels like 8. Yeah. It's ridiculous out there, guys. It's absolutely ridiculous. When I go outside for any length of time, I put on a pair of insulated overalls and insulated bibs and uh, another Carhartt coat. Carhartt insulated bibs and Carhartt coat over the top of whatever I'm wearing right now. And then gloves and, and beanie and, and so on. Chris, glad to see you, sir. Sorry you can't listen. Hope you catch us later. We're talking a little bit about uh, pain, triggers, and uh, treatment tonight, especially with weather treatment, uh, uh, changes in weather system cycles. It is too cold. Colder than the well diggers at. Uh, well, I don't go around feeling many well diggers asses, uh, so I can't tell you whether it is or not, but I would assume if they're down in a well digging that their ass might be cold. All those nerves are inflamed. All that tissue is inflamed. The question was an accident. I didn't have an accident. My son actually did have an accident today, but he's, he's feeling okay. But, yeah. Uh, the, the layering, keep trying to stay warm, that's, that's going to be the most critical thing that we can do to assist in decreasing that pain. Of course, medication is not a bad idea either. Uh, certainly something that has full-spectrum CBD, has terpenes and THC. Uh, but the CBD is going to do more for decreasing uh, the inflammation pain and, and, and so on than is uh, the THC. The THC will work on the pain, certainly, uh, but a completely different mechanism. Then we got things like RSO. RSO, Rick Simpson oil, or FICO, full extract cannabis oil. Uh, stuff that starts just like this. Decarbed uh, with stems. You see the little stems floating up in there. Uh, it even includes the stems. It's the uh, the whole the whole thing. And that'll be cooked down and and produce RSO, uh, full extract oil. But that provides everything the plant has, including. Everything on the CBD side as well as the THC side. Depending upon the plant, how much would be actually on the uh, CBD side is iffy. Uh, you're going to get more out of the stems and, and uh, trim than you are actually uh, any flower. Uh, the flower is going to convert. And certainly when you uh, deoxycarbolate it, uh, you're going to convert most of the CBD and THCAs to uh, 
to CBD compounds or THC compounds. So the, the, the deoxycarbolating it will actually make that happen and, and make it move forward in aging. So I'm hearing wonderful things. I have yet to, to try RSO. This is my, uh, my first attempt for RSO. I have not bought any. I'm going to uh, uh, make my own. Uh, we're going to see how that goes. I don't know how much I'll get out of what I uh, started with, but uh, three quarters of an ounce of flour. That uh, ought to be a pretty good start. That's what I had just happened to have uh, uh, handy for trimmings and uh, a couple stems and so on. So. But yeah, uh, RSO, wonderful stuff. But remember, RSO has the cannabinoids in it. Uh, so you're feeding that uh, CBD side. Uh, guys, as we talk about pain, the THC side is what's going to be the most effective uh, for pain control, uh, at least from smoking flour, uh, dabbing, uh, so on. And the THC is going to be the very most effective for pain control. But that's going to give you the THC, the Delta 9 THC, and give you that head high. If that is not where you want to go and you're looking at other options, RSO, eat it. Uh, uh, puts it into the body, lets it be processed through the liver. Uh, medibles. Yeah, Deb, they don't, uh, as you lose weight, they do not fit quite as well. I had to give several of my uh, uh, clothing to my uh, to my son because uh, I can't wear them anymore. They're just tints on me. They don't do any good. So. The RSO does a, you know, is a great thing. Uh, and like I say, the THC, the Delta 9 THC, certainly uh, uh, does a good job in pain control. Uh, now, you may not notice the, the, the more that it works for pain control, the less of that uh, head high elevation or uh, head change you'll feel. Because it's focusing on pain control, guys. That's, that's the key right there. <laughs> When you start to feel that head eye, unless that's specifically what you're going after for treatment of, of things like PTSD and a few others, uh, generally that says that you've got enough in your system to let it work. You got a little change, it's time to hold off a little bit and, and let it work and see where it goes. You can always go back and uh, hit a little more, add a little more to the system. You can always keep working on it. But at that point, you probably got enough. Unless your uh, focus is to put yourself in bed, in which case, go right ahead. Hit it two or three more times and uh, watch that couch box set in and uh, it'll be night-night time. You won't even know it. Medibles. Medibles, medibles, medibles. RSO. RSO medible. It's digested. It's processed through the liver. It certainly could be called a medible. Uh, lots of people actually eat it as uh, an adjunct on something else. Peanut butter crackers, cheese and crackers, uh, chicken salad and, and crackers. But they'll add it to the cracker and they'll eat it that way. Try to knock down the taste a little bit. Uh, it does have a uh, distinct taste, I'm told. Uh, as I say, I've never had it. I will know more. But that is what I've been. Now, the medible, when you uh, take the medible, you're not going to get the Delta 9 THC, right? Uh, you're going to get 11-hydroxy uh, cannabinol because uh, that's what's produced in the liver as it processes the Delta 9. But for pain control, that's a great thing because the 11-hydroxy cannabinol is actually a stronger compound for treatment of pain than is the THC itself. So you'll actually get more pain relief from it. 
process that way than you would if you did the other. Now, it's a lot quicker if you smoke it to get that in your system and get it started. But it doesn't last nearly as long, and it's not nearly as effective. Uh, we have people that are taking uh, edibles, some edibles, uh, for treatment of their pain, and we're talking about six and eight hours of relief for pain from a single cannabis capsule. Uh, they're like, I, I'll take the capsule, and I'm good. I don't need anymore. I don't hurt anymore. It takes about an hour, two hours to kick in, but it goes away. Jennifer, glad you could get it. Glad you could make it here tonight. Sarah, glad you could make it as well. Mr. Whitebrook, I hope your uh, birthday party for your uh, co-worker went well today. It is a cold ass night. And cough syrup. What about those uh, 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 tree sap or... Uh, what uh, we called it something else. Uh, prodankazine, I think is what we have in the shop. Prodankazine, and it's a uh, cannabis syrup. It's like a cough syrup, but it's made with cannabis. Uh, do they work? They do. I, I bought some last year and uh, had a bad cough, and it, and it helped with the cough quite a bit. For me, it helped with the cough. And I was feeling sick, so I wasn't wanting to smoke. Uh, it allowed me to dose uh, by, by doing the syrup. So it worked well. You can add it to molasses. Uh, sure, molasses would be great. Unless you're putting the molasses on your plants, and then I wouldn't put the THC with the molasses to put on your plants. But if you're doing it for you, sure, put it on molasses. Uh, I grew up as a kid. One of my favorite things to eat was uh, fresh hot biscuits with butter and molasses. Uh, mix the butter and the molasses up and just take the knife and spoon it on the biscuit and eat it. Uh, and my grandfather taught me how to do that. That uh, probably wasn't the best thing in the world, but uh, it sure was enjoyable. Susan, glad you could join us. Uh, Karen, glad to have it. But yeah, the syrup, uh, the RSO, getting it into the system and getting that uh, processed. And like I say, it takes a half hour to two hours uh, for it to actually get in your system and get to the, to the upper levels in your system, uh, therapeutic levels, high therapeutic levels in your system. So you just notice the pain melt away. Uh, they find yourself relaxed, uh, feeling good, able to move. No burning, no tingling, no uh, loss of sensation, or not as bad a loss of sensation. So you actually have a sensation change, and, and that's your body interpreting the way the, the pain sensations come. Uh, with the 11-hydroxy uh, in the system, it, it kind of changes the way the, the body sends the signal. Same thing with having the THC in the system. Same thing with having uh, the CBD in the system. All of them work together to change the way the body feels about things. Remember, folks, this is a natural plant. This natural plant actually works with the body to maintain homeostasis. Uh, homeostasis is the equilibrium, uh, equi equilibrium of the body to function appropriately. And that's what this plant actually does, is it works to keep that equilibrium there and intact. Uh, works, does a great job, tells the cells how to act appropriately, not to keep messing up like they are now. Uh, that's one of the ways it helps with cancer, is it tells the mitochondria to keep the appropriate things in the cells and keep the bad things out of the cells, and the cell actually poisons itself because the byproducts that it was putting off are supposed to be inside the cell, according to the mitochondria, according to the normal body function. They're supposed to stay inside the cell. However, those byproducts are toxic to the cancer cell, and it kills the cancer cell. So then it goes on and brings the white blood cells in to clean that up and eat it all up. And that's the function of the mitochondria with THC and CBD in the body to maintain homeostasis. Same thing with your joints. It will try to maintain the joints. It will work to maintain the joints. It will decrease your swelling. Hopefully, it will decrease your pain or change the way the pain is perceived. If you're having problems with 
transmission of pain impulse, such as with MS. The cannabis helps the signals travel so that you might actually see a increase in sensation with the cannabis on board that you didn't have previously because of the uh, because of the uh, uh, sores, the, 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 the issues on the, the, the lesions on the nerves affected by the MS. So certainly something to consider as we uh, get into this cold weather. Dara, talk to me about molasses. What do you want to do with the molasses? Mr. Rain, you never did let me know how that uh, how that infused uh, pre-roll was. Uh, which one did you smoke, the, the Royal Crown or one of the others? Uh, how was it? What did you think of it? Miss April, good to see you. Shannon, good to see you. Sometimes they do take a long time to take effect, Dara, and that is the problem. But the RSO should be a little quicker, hopefully. And sure, eat it with molasses. If that's what you like, uh, do that. I personally like uh, cane sorghum, uh, which is a form of molasses. It's the cane sugar molasses. And that's what uh, I grew up eating as pancake syrup was sorghum molasses, uh, cane sorghum. And I thought that was just what you're supposed to have on your pancakes. I didn't know they sold pancake syrup. You know, we got it by the gallon jug at the at, at, the, at the farmer's market. Uh, we didn't buy it at the grocery store as uh, pancake syrup. We had sorghum molasses. And that's what we had for syrup, for everything. So, you know, when I grew up, that was exactly what we used was molasses. We didn't have sulfur this, unsulfured that, yada, yada. We had molasses in it. Only one molasses, whatever brand you like. Hey, Roger, good to see you. You got kicked out? I'm sorry, I, I won't do that again. And I love molasses cookies, Karen. They are my favorite of all the cookies. Uh, snickerdoodles are good. Oatmeal raisin are one of my very favorites. But my favorite is the old dark molasses. But getting that in the system is what's going to help. And, and, and the one thing to look at there when you talk about how long the edibles take to kick in, uh, you're also looking at if it's taking that long for it to kick into your system and to feel the effects in your system, they are going to last for an extended period in your system as well, to where I might be four or five hours down the line, my medible's pretty much gone, I'm not feeling much from it. Six, seven, eight hours down the line, you may just still be feeling the effects from your metal because of your different metabolism. Because three hours is generally a pretty long time to, for, for a metal to take in. Generally, you look at it before two hours. Uh, and certainly, if you have enough of uh, a strong enough metal, uh, enough of a dose, you, you should feel it before then. Good, Tim. Yeah, they, the, uh, Robin had one the other night, and it was uh, pretty good. I think we only got about halfway through it, and that was really and truly all we needed with uh, everything else. Uh, it was uh, uh, quite interesting, and I don't know what, I think his was a lemon kush tool or something like that. So... I didn't know there was a royal crown. I thought it was just flavored stuff. And I didn't know there was a royal crown strain until I actually had to look it up because I was like, is it just flavor or is it actual strain? <laughs> They're going done soon, yeah. The Blue Dream and the, and, and the royal crown. Hey, Sean, good to see you. April, we don't want to leave marks when you kick him, okay? Don't, don't leave marks. Marks get you in trouble. You make sure you have plenty of padding so that you know, there's no marks.
And that's uh, very true, Deb, uh, Rearing your uh, strategies to uh, achieve the goal so that you might smoke a little bit and eat an edible or eat an edible and then smoke a little bit afterwards. You get the immediate effect and then you get the longer lasting effect from the edible to continue on or dabbing uh, and get used to concentrate, get that, that heavy duty effect. So you're layering that protocol. Uh, you're covering all the bases. You're getting the short-term now effects, and you're getting the longer-term uh, effects from the edible, and, and combining them. Uh, you mean a higher dose right now, but understand you're not going to overdose. What What is the very worst thing that can happen to you if you overdose on cannabis? Easy answer, guys. Somebody give me an answer. Very worst thing that can happen to you. It kicks you out now. Throughout the, that's it, Carrot, throughout the day. I'm trying not to kick anybody out. I don't want to kick anybody out. I like my viewers. I love having y'all come in and visit. It's nice to catch you, Sean. I, I guess you kind of slowed down on the harvest maybe a little bit, at least for the day. Y'all are working hard on it. Yeah, that's it. Karen, sleep. Uh, that, that's what you're going to get is you're going to get sleep. Hey, DC. Good to see you, sir. You might have issues with some anxiety or paranoia, uh, some of the other uh, uh, side effects of that head change. But the biggest one you're going to have is sleep, and you're going to go to sleep. And then when you get up, you're not going to have to worry about it anymore because it'll all be gone by the time you wake up. You may eat. Like I say, sleep is the big one. You're going to go to sleep. If you get that much in your system, you go to sleep. That's what you do. That is not a drug that is going to kill you for an OD. Like I say, if you eat too much, you might get that anxiety, and it's a longer-term thing. And lots of us over the years have eaten too, many, too much of an edible, had too many brownies, uh, something along that line. We've done it. Had too many cookies, too many brownies. Uh, got too high with the edible and, and had some anxiety. Uh, felt real anxious. Uh, had a big, big uh, change, uh, head change. Uh, and sometimes it's not the most popular. But the worst case scenario is you go to sleep. Certainly, there. if they cause that kind of anxiety for you, you want to stay away from them. And it doesn't matter what they are, whether they're uh, an indica dominant or a sativa dominant. It's more about the terpenes that they contain, the, the entourage effect causing that, than it is whether they are a sativa dominant or indica dominant strain. I know, April, it's not something that a lot of us get a whole lot of sleep. There is no catching up, Sean. <laughs> Y'all needed a break. Y'all got a lot done, and, and you'll, you'll you'll keep going tomorrow. How about that? It's not a you know, harvest. Is not a easy thing, guys. It, it's not unless you got a little tiny operation, and that wasn't a little tiny operation. Uh, legal CBD hemp operation. So uh, a lot of a lot of processing to do. A lot of flour to process. <laughs> but then they're not made to go lay all the way down in. That's the whole thing with the tub. You know, we used to make them big so that you could lay all the way down in them. But they found people drowned in the tubs when they lay all the way down in them. So they made them so that you can't get all the way down in them without bending your knees up and, and not having all your body in the tub. And actually, that's why they went with a shorter tub. A lot of people don't know, Darrow, that they, they really truly don't know that it is the terpenes and the combination of all those different... Uh, uh, chemicals uh, that are in the plant 
it is what makes the effect of it go. They they know, you know, you go to sleep with indicas and you're up with it sativas, and that's what they know. Because that's what people have told them. Uh, it's not always the case. It's more about the terpenes, uh, and uh, that is, is more what's going on than anything else. James Del Pierre, thank you for joining us, sir. Glad you could make it in. We're talking a little bit about uh, pain management with weather weather changes and uh, how to go about it, strategies for managing pain with, with strategies uh, to manage the effects of the cold, uh, utilizing our, our favorite plant, cannabis. I want to welcome everybody to Cannabis Strategies 101 with Professor Fields on the Mother Plant Network. In the background, you'll hear our uh, music provider, Johnny Randolph and Johnny and the Pistols, P-I-S-T-I-L-S. You'll find his music on SoundCloud. Guys, log on to SoundCloud, uh, hit him up, follow him, uh, get his music, enjoy it. Uh, check out some of the others on there while you're out there. Uh, There's several good uh, uh, radio podcasts uh, for several uh, cannabis uh, authors uh, on SoundCloud as well. So you can check them out. Uh, this podcast will actually be going out over Anchor. Uh, the link for the Anchor podcast, if you need it in a podcast form rather than a video form, is on my page. Our construction sponsor for the mother plant is Robin Selig, Selig Brothers Construction. Welcome, Robin, guys. No job too big or small. He's only a phone call away. Give him a call. See if he can help you out, uh, take care of your maintenance, uh, construction remodeling landscaping needs whatever they are give him a call his number is 405-404-1636 405-404-1636 also if you need firewood give robin oklahoma city metro give robin a call he has lots of good firewood and he'd love to make sure you get some so 405-404-1636 Daphne, glad you could join us tonight, huh? Josh, good to see you. Linda, good to see you. The warm, yes, the warm and the steam, believe it or not, Deb, will help as well. That warm steam from the hot water will, uh, uh, will help with uh, uh, both breathing and with relaxation and pain. Uh, as I say, my son has rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, especially in the cold, uh, we spent a lot of time you know, in a hot tub, just as hot as we could have with the steam, trying to get joints warm and get them to stop hurting. So I've been there quite a bit. Uh, I know how the warmth works. Uh, hot tub, uh, fantastic for joint warming. And believe it or not, it's not so cold that you'll be cold going in and out the house as you go out to a hot tub. So. Oh, excuse me, guys. The cold, Debbie, that's what's doing it. Uh, you and I both know it. It's the inflammation of the cold. The hot showers, the hot baths certainly are, 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 uh, are a game changer in getting the muscles going. The heat is, the, that moist heat is fantastic for them. Jack, good to see you. Nicole, glad to have you back. Glad you're out of Facebook jail. I guess now it's my turn to go to Facebook jail again. We're sending your loved ones out. I will, sure I will be next. Your Something I will do will uh, get me put there. The automatic adapter easily closes their car, connecting them to our platform for 24-7. <laughs> Dara, thank you, but... Uh, yeah, life goes on, and if you need to talk to him, certainly don't worry about me. I'm here, and everything is available for a later viewing. Automatic. 
sure it works to tag friends guys please do please like please share actually don't like love laugh uh wow face all of those are considered positive by facebook with the algorithm changes that they are just instituting uh the like button uh it, it literally doesn't do anything uh it doesn't count it's just a like button uh it doesn't count in the algorithms the the wow button the like the love or the uh, the love or the laugh those are all positive interactions the sad face and the uh angry face are negative interactions and actually uh decrease the reach of your podcast when you start getting them so uh, I know many of us have responded with angry faces when we don't like what something is said or done, or sad faces when somebody's hurting, uh, but uh, the love button would be a much better thing, and that will uh, help getting that those people's uh, information seen with Facebook, with their algorithm, to help getting out in front of other people. So like, love, laugh, share. Uh, we had one person put in jail. One of our contributors got put in jail for sharing their own feed. Uh, that's illegal based on the new rules. So I can't uh, share my feed. So like I say, laugh, love, share. Share where you think it needs to go. Share where you think it will be appreciated. If you know they're going to you know they're going to deny it, share it anyway. Let them make them deny it. It doesn't matter. Get the reach out. Do that for every one of our programs, guys. Raymond in the morning. Billy. Robin tonight, uh, Johnny Randolph, Josh, uh, Josh and Lindsay with their show. Share them out there. Even if people are getting two and three and four, the admin doesn't want but one, they can cut them off. I know that as admins, it gets kind of boring to go through and, and start deleting uh, multiple posts, but it's beating that algorithm so that we can get that reach. And that's what we have to do. Uh, other than that, Facebook throttles those we reach and who sees our material and who doesn't. So, certainly get it out if you can. Certainly the cold doesn't help it. I know, Josh, certainly uh, as you're uh, not feeling well. Uh, Coughing and hacking is not uh, a good thing. You might try some of that uh, tree sap syrup uh, along the line. That, uh, like I say, did a pretty good job for control of my cough. Not breathing underwater, but breathing the, uh, the, the, the steam from the hot water, yes. Warm, warm steam, warm, moist air. Susan, it is wonderful, isn't it? Uh, chronic pain. I, I injured my back. I herniated a disc in 97. Uh, and I went through 20 years of treatment that didn't really work, taking uh, anti inflammatories that all they did was uh, cause additional damage for 20 years. And, and it my choices were take opiates or cannabis. And in my field, if I got caught taking cannabis, I lost my job, lost my license. Uh, so I took their opiates uh, and I went through. And I, I did still take some cannabis and have cannabis. It wasn't an everyday thing. Uh, used it more for PTSD rather than pain uh, because I had the opiates for pain. I could rely on them and they didn't mind that I took opiates and did my job. They were fine with that. Uh, however, cannabis was a no-no. So, I just took the opiates and went on. Steam room with the Y. That, they, they're nice. Like I said, I miss my hot tub is down right now. Or uh, When I got off the broadcast, that's where I would be sitting in the hot tub. 104 degrees of hot steaming water. Just cover up completely. <laughs> Share? I would love to, Joshua, with you. Uh, it'd take me an hour to get to you. I would bring you some. They have some called Pro Dangazine at Max. I, I know they've got that. I don't know who else is carrying it. 
but lot, there are several different brands from several different processors that are uh, THC syrups work real good as cough syrups. Uh, so something you might uh, might give it a try. Hot bath, bath, bath bomb. <laughs> flood in the downstairs apartment. Uh oh, yeah, that would not be good with the bath is flood in the apartment. Especially not at uh, 26 degrees, uh, 24 degrees outside. So, certainly not. All right, guys, I remember, as of with anything else, it's the interaction with each other that uh, really gets the uh, information spread and gets the strategies out there. I can tell you all day long what I think. And you can take that and uh, a dollar and get a cup of coffee. Uh, and that's what it'll get you. A dollar and, and my uh, opinions will get you a cup of coffee. So we need to hear from you, the uh, the, the user, the sufferer, the, the, the person experiencing the pain and the, and the issues. We need to hear from you what works for you, uh, how it works for you, what specifically works for you. Strains, terpenes, strengths, amounts, doses, because everybody is different. And if we have a lot of people that seem to get the same responses to things, and we see that from talking to people, then maybe that's something we ought to look at uh, since many people are getting uh, a positive result from a specific uh, item, uh, strain, uh, whatever, for, for a specific condition. So certainly that would. Uh, influence the way we uh, we look at things. Josh, I hope you do, brother. I hope you find it. We do not have bath bombs, uh, but I understand up the street they do. So uh, we've got within, uh, from that one, from, uh, from, from my employers, we have, what, one across the street, one down the road, or three or four down the road within a mile four or five up the road within a mile, two of them within a quarter mile, one directly across the street. i got to love the, uh, the number of stores that are all building on top of each other. So makes it a little more challenging in the retail market to have, have that occur. Here in a little bit this evening, I'm going to uh, enjoy myself. I picked up some peyote cookies at uh, NATO Brothers Dispensary at their grand opening yesterday. And I'm going to smoke me some peyote cookies and see how much I, of a change I can get with some uh, peyote cookies. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Josh, yes, testing regs went into effect, effective November 1. Uh, they're, they're giving a little bit of uh, leeway time. They're not hammering too hard on them. However, they did go into effect. Uh, so they are, they are now in effect, yes. Mr. Chronic, good to see you, sir. Welcome. The White Widow for pain is certainly good, and I, I really do like Chem Dog for, for control of my pain and, and other symptoms. I, I like Chem Dog quite a bit. As I, say, I have not used RSO yet. I need to do that. It's on my list, however, uh, there are only so many, uh, so many dollars in the pocket and, and hours in the day, and, and I have to remain functional most of the time. So. I can't just try stuff willy-nilly, so I have to kind of plan out trying some of those new things. You can use, uh, Sean, certainly use topicals. Uh, the biggest thing is look at specific types. So you're looking at neuropathy. And the legs, so you're probably looking at more of a nerve issue rather than uh, an inflammation issue from the neuropathy. Uh, so if you're looking at a nerve issue, the THC side of things tends to work better for nerve direct issues. 
uh, where things like inflammation and, and swelling of the tissues will cause pain and can be ag can aggravate pain, but they're better treated with uh, with the anti-inflammatory from the CBD or even Tylenol. I hate to say it, but Tylenol is a great pain reliever, not by the fact that it does anything particularly good for pain, but it decreases swelling. And that's how it does such a good job. Ibuprofen the same way, decreases swelling. None of them are good for your liver, but they do do a good job decreasing the swelling. Kind of one, that, Sean, you're just going to have to kind of work on, on, on one that works specifically for yours since the uh, uh, pain, neuropathy pain is so individual. What could be pins and needles for you may be just a dull ache for me or, or a, a buzz. Uh, so it, it is so unique to you as an individual that you really have to work and experiment to come up with a, a regime that works for you. But certainly, a THC, a THC site uh, topical. Uh, I know that right now those are kind of hard to come by considering where you are. So CBD uh, with, with what you can get. Uh, if you can get the THC, certainly that would be better. And then, of course, uh, edibles for longer term uh, pain control and uh, shorter term right now. And uh, stopgap treatment with uh, concentrates or, or flour. Congratulations on getting the first harvest to be tested. Uh, as I say, they're not uh, going to do everything just by the book uh, because uh, with the new regulations, they are going to stop you from sending your tests in. It has to be taken by an agent of the lab and all tests must be taken by the agent and returned to the lab that night. What's up? But uh, that's part of those new regulations. I hear a lot of people talking about cheese strains. Uh, I tend to like a little more fuel than cheese uh, for mine, but uh, that, that's all right. If cheese works for you, jump on it. Uh, jump on it. Enjoy the hell out of it. Although I did kind of enjoy that purple cheese I was uh, tried the other day. That was pretty good purple cheese so and Tylenol does suck it's bad for the liver and it's not very good it's a low level uh, anti-inflammatory but it's a lot better than uh, two Tylenol is a lot better than 800 milligrams of uh, ibuprofen on the system it's kind of a, a trade off on what works and what doesn't Plum Loco, huh? I bet there is, man. A lot of trimming. Uh, how big was the harvest, Josh? How, how how huge was the harvest? I saw a bunch of the plants in there, and they were nice sized ones. <coughs> Excuse me. I am hoping that those peyote cookies, well, that's okay. Everybody works a little different. Deb, that, that, that's part of it, you know. Uh, the, believe it or not, the hospital uh, anti-emetic, uh, or not the anti-emetic, uh, fever reducer of choice is Tylenol. It doesn't do much for it, but it's better than anything else that they've got. Uh, they use it quite a bit for pain, too. It doesn't do a good job, not like we're used to doing. Uh, but for a lot of people, it does. And that it works better for you. Uh, jump on it. Do it. Uh, but 500 milligrams of Tylenol, which is the effective dose, uh, versus 800 milligrams of uh, ibuprofen, the Tylenol is actually better on the liver than the ibuprofen is at, that, at those levels. Not that they're bad levels, those aren't particularly bad levels, but uh, uh, 
you can overdose on on Tylenol a lot quicker than you can on on uh, ibuprofen. Yes, Sean, definitely. And since it was just decriminalized in uh, in, in Hawaii. It should not be a problem for him to find. Not that it probably was a problem for him to find beforehand anyway, but uh, certainly now with the decriminalization of why uh, it make it easier. A 15 pounds wet is uh, significant. Is it that time, Steve? What time is it, guys? I have to dig my watch out of my out of my sleeve so I can even see it. I guess I need to pay attention to that. Oh, it's ten o'clock. All right, guys. Well, we have uh, used our hour, and it's time for Lee to come on and do his thing. I know they do, and and we have to as patients, we have to educate them on what's better for us. That's part of that patient advocacy portion of this. Uh, we have to advocate for our best care, and that may not always be Tylenol. That may not always be Naproxen. It, it, you know, it could be all kinds of things. In our case, we utilize cannabis and have effective control with it, uh, and that is our medication. It's not a recreational thing for me. It's medication. Uh, on occasion, do I get a, 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 an altered uh, head and uh, enjoy the hell out of it? Yeah, on occasion I do. But but it's not a recreational thing. It's a medicinal thing. So. All right, guys. With that, as I say, it's time for uh, Billy Dunn and uh, Nightly News, Canon Nightly News, on the TMP, the Mother Plant Network. Thank you for attending Cannabis Strategies 101 with Professor Fields. I'll see you all tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. I will do my very best to be on time. And we will start at this again. Stay safe, stay warm, guys. It is nasty outside. You do not want to get trapped outside in the cold. Make sure you have all your travel equipment, something to eat, something to drink, and some warm blankets in the car if you're going to be out and about on the road, guys. You break down, those things will come in extremely handy. And at 24 degrees, chances are it might well happen, okay? And we got a 50-mile-hour wind still blowing out there, making it chilly, chilly for the wind chill. Please stay warm, stay safe, stay medicated. I love you all. I look forward to seeing you in just a little bit. Thank you for coming to the show. Good night.